So summer is over and we're enjoying those weird English autumn days, sort of sunny and sort of cold. I'm trying to make the most of these last sunny days to be out in the garden to do a bit of tidying up and collect the last of the harvests before the full force of winter kicks in. I have been a little ill over this last week, as you can maybe hear, but today I received some really good news that the legal issues I mentioned in my previous video have finally been resolved and I'm now in the position to complete the sale of my flat, so I hope to be leaving London very soon. And so it just seems apt to be celebrating this upcoming change in my life as we enter nature's season of change, autumn, which is an opportunity really to appreciate the passing season and to start wondering about what might be coming next. It's been a strange year weather-wise in the south of England. We've had bone dry hot periods followed by sodden weeks of rain, which has meant some of the gardens suffered quite badly while other parts thrived. So today I'm harvesting some of the last vegetables while I give the place a little tidy up for winter. It was a particularly bad year for my poor apple tree here, which is normally laden with fruit at this time of year, but the few it produced this year have long gone, although I did spot one last apple from my bedroom window, rosy and ripe, high in the canopy and not the easiest to reach, but I was determined to get it as part of today's harvest. Although I've been hoping to leave London for a while, this little garden in suburbia has been a real haven over the last few years, and it's funny to think just a few years ago it was one big weedy lawn. I remember making a video just as I was setting up my first vegetable beds and since then I've slowly worked on it to create a more private, intriguing space, a sort of secret garden meets potager kitchen garden. It's by no means perfect, there are plenty of weeds and overgrown shrubs, but I quite like that loose cottage garden style. It has a sense of fullness that I think would be missing from a formal garden, which can almost feel a bit like a wrangled struggle against nature. And over these last few months in London, I've really tried to appreciate and fully experience the garden because I knew, or at least I hoped, it would be my last summer here. And instead of projecting into some future moment with a perfect garden and the perfect new house, a perfect living situation, instead I've been trying to look at the elements of my life that I already love and can appreciate. This little urban garden, for example, that provides me with at least one meal every day in the summer. I've got an apartment that I've decorated and furnished to be the cosy little sanctuary I wanted, even if the location wasn't perfect. I'm grateful for the time I've had in London to set up my business, to make friends, whether short term or long term, and to learn about myself through the recent difficulties of feeling trapped somewhere I didn't want to be, and to enjoy a sort of peace, really, in accepting the situation. The good thing about having a looser attitude to gardening is you see how nature thrives without us. If you let it do its own thing, it might even give you a few surprises, like this mess of overgrown radish leaves that never came to anything because it was too hot in the summer, but rather than ripping them out, I left them, and now it's providing a bounty of edible seed pods. They make great little snacks, but also if I leave a few, they'll produce seeds for next year. So although it was a beautiful sunny day when I recorded this last week, the cooler air is a sign of winter approaching, and the garden is definitely looking past its best. You can feel it winding down for the year, readying itself for the cold of winter. And at this time of year, I think my own feelings kind of mirror that. There's something quite cosy about getting the coats and the jackets out, or the first time you have to put the heating on for the winter. I love nights on the couch under a blanket, re-watching my favourite shows or reading a book. I just appreciate the change in seasons as a sign to slow down.
On my Instagram the other day, I saw a quote from Eckhart Tolle. Some changes look negative on the surface, but you will soon realise that space is being created in your life for something new to emerge. I think observing nature at this time of year really echoes this thought. Autumn is a time to slow down, to recuperate, and it reminds us that for new growth to happen, the past things must be left behind to die and decay. Behind all this green, of course, are the autumnal signs of decay. The leaves are browning, the herb garden is thinning to reveal harvests that I missed and plants that have fallen victim to pests. But among it, some plants are still producing, still sending out their last fruits for the year or sprigs of new growth. Even if they might not come to anything, they're like little beams of hope among the decay hinting at what might come in the spring. And although the flowers are fading, we can do a little maintenance to keep them around a bit longer. Deadheading these petunias helps them find new vigour, and the discarded clippings become next year's compost, the goodness in them broken down for the next cycle of the garden's growth. And until spring comes, it's lovely to enjoy these last stoic flowers, the last ones that will romp on until the first frosts. And even in the darkest, most overgrown corner of the garden, I spotted this little collection of flowers, bright fuchsias like wee jewels in the shadows, a reminder to enjoy the last little hints of summer that are left. One of the reasons I love the climate in this part of England is we get to experience all four seasons and it naturally leads you to reflect on the seasons in life. Sometimes it's great to be growing and moving at full speed but other times we need to slow down, to rest and hibernate, maybe even say goodbye to certain things in our lives that don't serve us anymore. But for some reason humans seem so resistant to change, whether it's ageing or moving house, starting a new relationship or career, all of it seems to be met with such fear. But if we can view all of that as part of the seasons in our life, it can help us see past the scary parts of the change. On a surface level, when I think of the issues I've had trying to move out of London, the delays in my situation and how frustrating that was at first, I now wonder if maybe it was a necessary delay. If I'd been able to move last year when I wanted to, I never would have found the place that now seems so perfect for the next step in my life. And even dealing with the frustrations of these legal issues, I've also learned something about accepting a situation that you can't change. And I've also had time for a bit of a life purge as well, clearing out some of the old issues and mental mess that was clogging my head. Sort of feels like I've been laying the groundwork for a fresh start. So, as I enjoy what could be the last sunny day in my London garden, I feel a real sense of gratitude. I'm so grateful to have had this place to enjoy over the last few years, to have been able to make it my own and to learn from observing. And now I'm excited for the coming change. I'm also grateful to everyone who has watched these recent videos. Thank you for the lovely comments. And I noticed a little surge in new subscribers, so welcome and thank you for being here. I'm feeling quite inspired to continue with these gentler, slow living videos, so please do subscribe if you haven't yet, and hopefully I'll see you again soon. Wishing you all well. Thanks for watching.